Mighty are the evil spirits of the woodland that have the power to do us harm, little Hawk. But mightier still is the good medicine for Manitou, the great spirit that vanquishes them. Dakwatana speaks with great wisdom. For many moons, there's been war between us, Takwatana. As a blood brother of the Shawnee, as a friend of the Cherokee and the Tuscarora, I say that the white man and the red man should learn to live together in peace. I'm glad that Gabe has finally been able to arrange this meeting between us. The ways of Manitou are strange, Boom. Strange even to the cunning of Tuscarora. It is not given to us alone to understand these. What remains mysterious to us may be knowledge to the white man. That is why I call you here today. The white medicine man. He is still in Boonesboro. The white teacher, Pickering. It is Tequitano's wish to place his son in the white man's school. To bring friendship and understanding between white man and Tuscarora. Lil Huck should be armed with both Tuscarora wisdom and white man knowledge. Your face darkens, Big Turtle. It is not your wish to bring understanding between our people. As Tequitano bears witness, that has always been my wish. But my heart remains troubled. The white men of the settlement have often shown anger toward the Tuscarora, and the Tuscarora toward the whites. Even the small ones of school age, both red and white, are not without anger. I wouldn't want anything to happen to Little Hawk, for that would destroy all chances of peace between us. Little Hawk could stay with you, Boo. We'd be honored to have him. Then it is decided. Little Hawk will go with you now to attend school with the white man. Farewell, my son. Stand proud. Listen wisely. I know you will not disgrace us in the school of the white man. say yes. What do you mean he didn't say yes or no? Well, I guess what I'm trying to say is I didn't ask him. You didn't ask him? Oh, Dan, that boy's expecting to go to school tomorrow. I know. Daniel Boone, you march right back to that schoolhouse and tell Amos Pickering he has another pupil. Mr. Pickering. <laughs> Not in the man himself, Becky. It's, it's just that uh, stream of words that he can hurl at you. The first thing you know, you're sinking down in the bog of ancient history and Greek. Well, Greeks or no Greeks, he's going to teach Little Hawk just like the rest of them. Well, I promised Gabe and Tequitana that he'd get school, and the only thing I didn't do was ask Mr. Pickering. He's getting paid, isn't he? Yeah, a matter of speaking. But don't forget, he became our schoolmaster on the condition that he run the school with no interference from any of us. Nobody's telling him how to run the school. We're just telling him who to teach. Mr. Boone, I didn't hear you come in. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Non omnia possumus omnes. When I read Virgil, I lose all sense of time. Don't you? I have enough trouble ciphering English, let alone Latin. Uh, then let me translate. We are not all capable of everything. And they say Latin is a dead language. Mr. Pickering, uh, there's something else that's not exactly dead around here. Yes, Mr. Boone? I'm talking about Indians. Ah, the noble savage. Well, the truth of the matter is, they're no more noble than we are, or more savage, they're just people. 
Come to the point, Mr. Boone. Well, what I'm trying to say is that I promised an engine chief we'd give a son of his some schooling. You promised? I'm afraid I did. Splendid. It'll be a great challenge to mold a gentleman out of a little savage. I presume I shall be paid for my services? Oh, yes, yes, indeed. Uh, some people consider their coinage better than ours. Capital, Boone. Capital. <laughs> Hungle Yes, very good. Think you like Whiteman's food? <laughs> What's wrong? Did I say something funny? I'm afraid you did, Israel. You call this white man's food. Well, it is, isn't it? I've been eating it all my life. Blueberries, Johnny cake with honey, and broiled trout. That's Indian food, Israel. We got it from them. Indians were making pancakes out of cornmeal and eating it with wild honey long before the white man came. They just showed us how to do it. Berries and fish have always been favorite Indian food. Not only for breakfast, any time. And don't forget about potatoes, pumpkin, squash, beans, yams. It's all Indian food. We learned about it from them. And we're supposed to be teaching you our ways. We will. He has a lot to learn. But we want him to know about our history, how we govern ourselves, what we believe in. By learning the ways of the white men, my father says I serve as a link between the white men and the red. Israel, I've got an important job for you. You can trust me, Paul. I want to make sure that... Uh, Little Hawk gets started in school the right way. And that you help him with his lessons and that he gets along with the kids. That's a big responsibility, Israel. Well, I can handle it. Engine, engine, smelly pot. Where's the feathers of a duck? Engine, engine, fix the jet. Has no money, pays no rent. Engine, engine, smelly buck. Where's the feathers of a duck? <laughs> Where'd you get the duck feathers? It's an eagle feather. Mad mm -hmm. duck feathers. <laughs> Stop it! Stop it this instant! Get up! Get up! All of you! Stop this! You know I never permit violence in my school. If there is to be any violence, I shall administer it. There wouldn't have been any trouble, sir, if that engine hadn't showed up. Yeah, we don't want any redskin kids in our school. And Israel Boone brung him. Brought. It's brought. Now, I shall decide who attends my school. All of you. March! I've had enough trouble for one day. I will tolerate no more. Now, before we begin today's lesson, I want to make very clear my position with regard to our new pupil. Now then, as a settlement, we have had our problems with the Tuscarora. And I dare say they have had their problems with us. But hopefully, we are in a new era of good feelings. And I hereby charge all of you to treat our new pupil with the same consideration that you would extend to any new boy. I hope it will not be necessary for me to mention this subject again. Oh, Mr. Boone. Well, excuse me, Mr. Pickering. I uh, didn't mean to interrupt. It's always a privilege to welcome the leader of our community. Thank you. I just thought I'd stick my head in and see how things were going. Splendidly, Mr. Boone. Splendidly. Uh, did you think otherwise? No, sir. Little Hawk's father is aware that the schoolmaster must be paid monthly for giving education and uh, wampum or white man's goods. Now that's correct. Payment in advance. One pair of moccasins. To comfort your feet. One dried fish. Thank you. Good to eat. Last many weeks. One bear claw necklace. A necklace of bear claws? To wear on festivals and holidays. But bear claws? Well, as you say yourself, Mr. Pickering, each pupil according to his ability to pay. Yes. It's Little Hawk's most cherished possession. He killed the bear himself. Wow. It must have been a very large bear. In his tribe, it's a part of the test of manhood. How'd you kill him? With a spear. Well, that took great courage. You, you had to get quite close. All right, class, uh, resume your seats. A little Hawk, uh, please stand and tell us exactly how much education you have had, if any. 
a missionary lived with my tribe many moons. He taught me how to speak the language of the Yengis. He also taught me how to write. I know the alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. boys are doing in school, boo. Oh, well, I reckon they've had time to settle down. Angel never was much of a scholar, but who's taking care of it too much of a At least he's never made a ruckus. As for, uh, Little Hawk, I reckon he's had time to get used to the routine, settle down. Wouldn't surprise me to learn that he fits in just like a hand in a glove. All in all, I'd say things couldn't be much better. Now then, the lower grades will write three verses from Mother Goose. From memory, watch your penmanship. The middle grades will work out these problems in arithmetic at your desks. And the upper grades will write a brief description of the conquest of the Persian Empire by Alexander the Great. Uh, yes, Little Hawk? Uh, something you don't understand? No, I understand what is to be done. I am puzzled about something else. In regard to what? Alexander the Great. And why is that subject your concern? Because I've sat here for many days listening to you speak of him and of other great heroes of the white man. I've been here for almost one week. I've heard the teachings of the white man. His laws, his customs, his ancient kings, his heroes. The past is the key to the future. The Indians also have laws, customs, heroes, battles, traditions, and tales of ancient days. Go on. Why do you not teach of the great Indian hero, Hiawatha, a Mohawk who united the five Iroquois tribes? Are you quite serious? If the red man is to learn the white man's ways, surely the white man should learn the ways of the red man. This is preposterous. My father is a wise man. He has said, understanding is a path that travels two ways. Yes, Joe, what is it? It sounds like a good idea, Mr. Pickering. It'd be a lot more interesting learning about Indians than about those old Romans and freaks you told us about. Greeks, not freaks. <laughs> And studying the classics simply cannot be compared with learning the habits and superstitions of primitive savages. But the Indians have taught us an awful lot about... Enough! Let there be an immediate end to this discussion. It is my position that schools are not supposed to teach white children about Indians. It has never been done, and I see no point to it. Now, get on with your lessons. Hey, Little Hawk, tell us some more things about the Redskins. Yeah, yeah what? tell us what you want to pick right to teach us about. There's too much to know. It would take many moons. No. I cannot tell everything in one afternoon. Just give him an idea. Tell him some of the tests you had to take for that manhood. Yeah. yeah. Most of it is secret. I would first have to get permission from the tribal elders. But I can tell you this. They tested my endurance, my courage, and my ability to withstand pain without crying out. Gee, when my old man wallops me, I yell. <laughs> How come Indians always have such funny names? Like Little Hawk and Yellow Lance, Standing Bear, White Cloud. When an Indian child is born, the father walks out of the teepee full of happiness. And whatever he sees first, or the first thing that enters his mind, is what he names the child. That is supposed to bring good luck to the baby. When I was born, my father saw a little hawk. When the child grows up, he can choose another name if it pleases him. I wish I was an Indian. I'd sure call myself something besides Jonathan. Hey, tell us something about your medicine man. His most important job is to cure sickness. We call him shaman. The family of the sick person must pay him in advance to make the cure. But there's one great difference between the shaman and the doctor of the white people. What's that? If the patient dies, he has to pay back the fee. <laughs> the shaman can also change himself into an animal, talk to spirits, travel to the other world, make rain, foretell the future. Oh, we don't have a doctor like that, do we? Gee, I never reckoned there was so much to learn about Indians. Excuse me, Indians. I'd sure like to learn about that stuff a lot more than about old Julius Caesar and King George III. We all agree about it. Thing is, how do we convince Pickering to teach it in school? I'll tell you what we'll do. I'll get some of the other guys. Think about it. And after supper, we'll meet in the old cave. See if anybody thought of anything. Looks like everybody's here. Anybody got any ideas? Suppose we all stay out of school for a few days. That'd make old Pickering give in. Uh, nah, that's no good. And our folks will paddle us for not going. 
Yeah, they'd give us extra chores if we're not in school. Yeah, yeah that's right. right. Hey, look, we want old Pickering to start teaching us about engines, right? Sure, we've already decided that. And we're sore because he won't do it, right? Joe Higby, we stop telling us stuff we already know? Well, what you don't know is we got us what they call a grievance. What's a grievance? I mean, it's something that ain't fair. Grievances are what the Patriots had at the First Continental Congress. We learned about it in school. Hey, that's right. Yeah, it kind of stuck in my mind at the time because I had a grievance that we had to learn about all them grievances. <laughs> well, anyway, remember what the delegates did at the Congress? Well, sure, they picked a committee and then the committee made a list of all the colonial grievances. And they presented it all to the king in the form of a petition. That's what I'm talking about. What are you talking about? A petition to Pickering. Hey, that's good. That's a good idea. Oh, if the patriots who started this country can do it, so can we. Pickering will have to give in. He's the one who told us about it. <laughs> Extraordinary. Utterly incredible. This is the most amazing document I have ever seen. Eight completely different sets of handwriting. The word grievance misspelled five different ways and numerous other examples of unbelievable orthography. Sentence structure that threatens to destroy the very foundations of our language and penmanship that can only be compared to the tracks made in wet snow uh, by a drunken squirrel. Obviously, a cooperative effort. You didn't trust any single individual to do the job, so you botched it up collectively. The uh, technical aspects of this document notwithstanding, I am deeply impressed by the concept of the petition, also by the sentiments expressed herein. I wish to compliment all of you on the approach you took. However, this school is not the Continental Congress, and I am not King George. And much as I may be in favor of a democracy, no school can be run like one. A school is a place of learning where the schoolmaster has absolute power to decide every aspect of the curriculum. And so, my dear young pupils, I know it will grieve you to hear this, but your request to begin a course of Red Indian studies is hereby denied. <laughs> Seems like the only thing old Pickery knows about partitions is how to spell it. What do we do now? I don't know. Tuscarora, have I sing? Chikwasea tush pachinio. What does that mean? Silence is the ambush of the weak. You mean? You haven't done your homework. No, sir. Baxter, I'm disappointed in you. Usually you're one of the boys I can depend upon to do his lessons. Take your seat. Uh, Jonathan, you name the two patriots who organized the Boston Tea Party. I, I don't know, sir. All right, class. All together. This is most unusual. Doesn't anybody know anything? Yesterday was a unique experience in the history of collective human stupidity. Never have I seen a class so utterly devoid of knowledge. I hope today there will be a vast improvement. Israel, open your reader and turn to the biblical story of David and Goliath and read the first paragraph aloud. David was a young sheeper. Shepherd? The word is shepherd. Shepherd, boy, who, who tended his flock while King Saul... Saul. King Saul. Oh, yeah, K King Saul. Was at war with the Fi Fi Philistines. Philistines! Uh, Joe, will you come to the blackboard and work out the problem uh, showing every step? I won't be able to do it, sir. Why not? I can't hold the chalk. And why, pray tell, can't you hold the chalk? I hurt my hand. I'm in awful pain. Uh, Little Hawk, you've shown great proficiency in arithmetical computation. Will you come to the blackboard and solve the problem for the class? I cannot hold the chalk either, sir. What happened to you? I was wrestling with Joe. I, too, hurt my hand. Extraordinary. 
perhaps you'll all feel better after lunch. Class dismissed. Class. Now that our jolly lunchtime recess is over, let us get back to work. These are the parts of speech of the English language. Now, verb, adjective, adverb, conjunction, preposition, pronoun, interjection. Now then, class, copy these on your papers and write a word uh, to illustrate the use of each one. Well, proceed. I lost my copybook. Someone broke my pen. I don't have any more ink. Someone stole my inkwell. Mine too. What'd you say about conjunctions? What's a pronoun? Enough. Well, my friends, we have come to the end of a most interesting experience. This has all been a clever little plot to bring me to heel, eh? I would not exceed your demands to provide instruction about Indians. So you call a general revolt to bring me to heel. You seem eager to learn. Well, you will learn one very important lesson. Amos Pickering is not a man to be easily intimidated. I am here with breaking up the revolt. I know who the ringleaders are and they will be dealt with. Israel Boone, you will proceed to the woodpile and chop wood for the classroom stove. A three months supply will do for the start. Uh, Little Hawk, my wily redskin antagonist, you will secure whitewash, a bucket and a brush, and proceed to paint the schoolhouse and the fence. Joseph Higby, Jonathan Latimer, and Baxter Warren, you three co-conspirators will write 1,000 times the sentence, I will not scheme against my teacher again. Well now, get on with it. Perhaps you did not hear? We heard you, Mr. Pickering. And we're not going to do it. We're not going to be disciplined for doing something that we believe in. Indeed. I will not tolerate defiance, nor I suspect will your parents, when I call a town meeting for tomorrow night. White Brothers, it gladdens my heart to see how much you try to help. Do not blame yourselves for having failed. Now it is my turn. Got an idea? I will go into the forest and pray and fast all night. I will ask Money too, the Great Spirit, for guidance. He will tell me what we must do. Think it'll work? That is what the tribal chiefs do when they seek wisdom. Well, I'd like to go with you, do all that stuff. Two of us working will happen faster. You do not realize what you ask. It is hard for one who is not accustomed to it. It is better that I go alone. Maybe I never took any of that man who would test or anything. But I reckon I can do anything you can. As you wish. It's the frost in the air tonight, boys. You sure you're not going to eat some more cover? No, thank you, Mom. You know, I can still heat your supper up. You didn't have a thing to eat. No, we're not hungry. Well, that's no way for growing boys to get in the
We have to put on war paint? All Indian paint is not war paint. We paint our bodies and our faces for different reasons and in different ways. This is ceremonial paint. I didn't know you had a frog. What are you going to do, kill it? No, we will do the frog dance to appease the gods whom we respect for their wisdom. Can I keep dancing? Keeps me warm. Just ask him. O oh, great spirit, which lives in everything, the sky, the earth, the trees, the grass, the animals and birds, hear us, we pray to you. Help us in our needs. Tell us what we must do to soften the heart of Pickering. Send us a vision. O oh, great spirit, I'm not an Indian, so I don't know if you're supposed to listen to me, but I'd sure be mighty please if you came through with everything Little Hawk just got through asking. Sure it's kind of cool out here. This paint doesn't do much to keep a fellow warm. Sitting out in that air. Sure, sure gets a uh, well, his appetite up. We didn't have any supper. You know what I do when I'm hungry at home in the middle of the night? I get up and I have a snack. You must continue to pray. I'm praying. I'm praying I had some food. It is important to refrain from eating. Only by fasting and praying will the Great Spirit help us. I reckon I do. The great spirit of the Indians talked to me. I know just what to do to put the pressure on old Pickering. What is it? Tell me. I'll be glad to tell you right after breakfast. Oh, thanks a lot, great spirit. Come on. Oh, that's the way I like to see boys eat. Guess a good night's sleep must have perked up your appetites. Come out here a minute. Sure, Paul. I figured it's time for you and me to have a little talk. What about? Well, it seems Mr. Pickering is mighty upset with you. He's called a special parents meeting tonight. You mind telling me what it's all about? Fact is, I don't like school anymore. It's kind of sudden, isn't it? It teaches us stuff we don't have any use for, like. Old dead kings and queens and mother goose for kids. Fractions. Well, Mr. Pickering's a fine teacher. He's teaching you important things like our country got its independence. Sure. You all agree that's good to know, but all the other stuff's a waste of time compared to other things. Well, what other things? I'd like to hear about it. Well, Little Hawk had a good idea. So we gave it to old Pickering. If Indians are going to learn about white folks so they'd be better understanding and peace, well, why can't white kids learn about Indians? So what's sauce for the goose is sauce for the gander. Huh? That's one of those nursery rhymes you don't think much of. So you asked Mr. Pickering to tell you more about the Indians, and he refused. 
We even drew up a list of grievances. When that didn't work, we decided to gang up on him to make him give in. What do you mean, gang up on him? Guess you could call him mutiny. And I take it that my son is one of the head mutineers? Why don't you tell your mother and me about the reason for this uh, revolt? It's hard not to tell our parents. They always side with the teacher. Well, I reckon this is one parent that doesn't. I don't always agree with Mr. Pickering. You don't? No, I, I think it's a fine idea for you to learn more about Indians. I think you have a right to. But I think Mr. Pickering has some rights, too. He has a right to order and cooperation in the classroom. Now, you take care of that, and I'll do what I can about those Indian studies. You will? Sure. Don't know why not. I'll get a hold of Gabe. We can come over after class in the afternoon. I'll tell the parents about it at the meeting tonight. Gee, thanks, Paul. Get in there and finish your mush. <laughs> up all night and fast and pray? Sure we did. Did you get a vision from the great spirit? He did. I thought of a great plan. We won't need it now. Why not? Because we're going to get all we want. I talked my paw into it. How do we know we can trust him? You saying he can't trust my paw? I'm saying he can't trust any grown-ups. Not when they're all together. Well, I guess we're just going to have to attend that town meeting tonight. And I confess that I am completely powerless to cope with such insurrection. Since the situation is so critical, I put it to you. You parents are the only ones who can deal effectively with your own children and crush this odious threat to the very existence of our school. I say we're not trouble making youngins need is a good tenant. I think it's the only way to learn to respect. We've heard from Mr. Pickery, and uh, no doubt he's been sorely put on, and we've also heard from Mr. Higby, and I can see that most of you favor his notion. <laughs> Maybe our kids have gone about this all wrong, but their hearts were in the right place, and they want what we all want, peace with the Indians. And they think maybe that'll be easier to come by if they know more about them. Now, I uh, think I have a way that we might be able to avoid Mr. Higby's uh, idea of a workout in the woodshed and still satisfy our schoolmaster and the youngins. Now, why don't Gabe and I teach a class in Indian studies? After school. That way, the youngins would be getting what they want, Mr. Pickering would be getting what he wants, control, and everybody else could be happy. I don't know about you folks, but I can't spare my boy for extra class time. I'm a widow, and he's got to help with the chores. I can't spare mine, neither. What good is it to know about Indians? It ain't important. That's right, it ain't the most important thing that we try. Our kids think it is. Well, maybe we ought to listen to them for a change. Now, all they need to know is reading, writing, and arithmetic. Now, that's what school is for. Let's put it to a vote. Ladies and gentlemen, there will be no vote. Mr. Boone, your son is the ringleader of a group of rebels. He has incited them to unruly behavior, disruption of orderly routine, and open defiance of my authority. And you, sir, have the temerity to propose teaching my pupils a subject I have decided was non-essential. By so doing, you also are undermining my authority. Under the circumstances, I have no alternative but to resign immediately. And you, sir, if you so ardently wish to become a teacher, can take over the entire school yourself. Oh, you can't leave. Well, well, I'll find somebody else. else. Because schoolmasters are harder to find than feathers yeah. on a fish. We'll be months looking for another teacher. No, that time our youngins ain't got no school at all. Well, I guess there's nothing to do except go ahead with plan. Well, you know, when the parents of Boonesboro get all riled up, they certainly can turn the air blue, and uh, you blistered me pretty good. I, uh, I feel that the kids would have benefited from Indian studies, but maybe you're right. And certainly, regular school studies come first. And I wouldn't want to lose Mr. Pickering. So, uh, I'll just withdraw my suggestion. Yeah. Thank you. A wise decision, Mr. Boone. We all thank you. Now then, let's get on to other problems. Uh, we will have more pupils in school next year. We need to expand the schoolhouse, buy additional supplies. So if we set up a community fund and all the families that have a child in school contributes to it, we'll have enough easily to get our supplies. Doing. Just a 
like Indians and men in rage, just like the grown-ups did. Grown-ups? What do you mean, grown-ups? The patriots in Boston. Mr. Pickering told us about them. They were protesting against injustice. Yeah, Samuel Adams and Paul Revere and all of his friends. They pretended to be uh, Indians, and they raided all the British ships in the harbor. Threw all the tea in the ocean. They call that the Boston Tea Party. This is the Boonesboro Book Party. Yeah! yeah! The Boonesboro Book Party. Just like the tea. Our school books are an injustice to us. So we did what Samuel Adams did with the tea. We threw it in the ocean. I mean, well. Well, Mr. Pickering, you're a real good teacher. These young'uns have learned their lessons real well. But that was a rather drastic way to show your feelings, wasn't it? Just did what we reckoned was right, Pa. We had courage of our conviction. What you say people should always have? Just following your advice. Perhaps my pupils consider me a harsh man, but I'm also a fair one. Above all, I admire courage and independence of spirit. I can't help respect what my boys have done in defense of a principle. Uh, remember that education has for its object the formation of character. And if I fail to teach them anything else, I should always admire the fact that they possess character. Now then, I believe I'm a more reasonable man than was King George of England. The Boonesboro Book Party has accomplished its purpose. And starting tomorrow, I will begin teaching what my pupils so adamantly want the history and culture of their Indian neighbors. Yeah! Well, you're a real good man, Mr. Pickering, and we're real lucky to have you. But there's still a great big problem. We have to continue with our school studies, and we can't. All the books we have are gone. They're ruined. Here are your books, Pa. I made sure they'd be all right. So before we put them in the bag, we wrap them in waterproof oil skin. <laughs> I will outline briefly the areas we will cover. Uh, regretfully, I am a novice in this field, but Mr. Boone and Mr. Cooper have graciously volunteered to help me whenever I falter. You might just say we are visiting professors. Only you won't have to pay us in dried fish or bear claw necklaces. <laughs> There are many Indian tribes in North America, all of them loosely related, but their languages, customs, and traditions differ greatly. And because the subject is so vast, it's best that we concentrate on those tribes in our part of the country. You're going to learn about Indian handicraft. As Little Hawk knows, the Indians are great pottery makers and basket weavers. And I'll teach you about this picture writing, which tells about their customs and legends. Uh, we'll cover Indian government. Their political organizations, their treaties, their laws. It may come as a surprise to many white people, uh, but the five nations of the Iroquois Confederacy, the Mohawk, Oneida, Onondaga, Cayuga, and Seneca, are very advanced politically. They have elected representatives, and they meet in a council house somewhat like our Congress. I reckon I'm going to help Mr. Pickering tell you about Indian heroes. Pontiac, the chief of the Ottawas. Hiawatha, a Mohawk who united the five Iroquois tribes. Logan, the fighting chief for the Cayugas. Logan's Indian name was Hayutaha. Da Hayuta. Do not feel badly. To an Indian, the name Pickering is just as difficult. <laughs> I have been listening to your words, and to those of Boone, and to the mighty chief of the Blackskin, Kanawachakahu. I did not send my son to the school of the white man to learn about the ways of the Indian. Well, see if the way it's working out, we learn from one another. Yeah. You have filled my heart with gladness for what you have done for Little Hawk. Thank you. But now, I have come to take my son with me. Must he leave now? It's time for the tribe to move on. They have to go where there's fresh game. Huh. We will come back in six or seven moons. Can't you stay behind? I have passed the test for manhood. I must do my share of the hunting. A little hawk. There will always be a place for you here. Until you come back, keep this with you. It is good medicine. I will keep it to ward off the evil spirits of ignorance. <laughs> 